Hey guys, Ivan here, so we are 6 days out of Mr. Olympia and in this video today we have a couple of great physique updates which I'm gonna show you, we're gonna analyze them First, we're gonna start with Hunter Labrada who looks more conditioned than he ever was in his life. Now, as you guys probably know, Hunter Labrada never lost any show except for Mr. Olympia. So literally every show he entered, he won all those shows. So he's a great bodybuilder. Take a look at the quads right here. He's a great, he's a phenomenal bodybuilder, top four in the world right now, but he was never really peeled. He was never really carved. He was never really separated deeply. He never really had that level of conditioning and it looks like he is bringing it this year. Take a look at the back. Pay attention to his lower back and his lower lats. He never had these details, these lines in his lower back. Never. And I don't think his glutes were ever this condition. We're gonna compare him to some other guys later, but I have to say this is by far the best conditioning that Hunter ever had on stage or six days out. So he still has six days left to carb up, to dry out, to dehydrate, which all means he's just gonna get more detailed, harder. Look at the shoulder separation, look at the small waist also. Two of the most impressive things that I see in this video is first of all details in the quads, look at the details, he never had these deep cuts, and also the waistline and the details in the abs, look at this, look at how small his waist is right now. So the waistline, the taper, the V-taper looks amazing and also the details, and look at the conditioning now in the shoulders, in the chest, definitely the best conditioning Hunter ever had in his life. Also, his wee taper never looked better. So, Hunter Labrada definitely falls into that aesthetic category on Mr. Olympia stage, but also he falls into a mass monster category at the same time. And Hunter Labrada is very, you could say, deceivingly big. You can't really realize how big he is unless he's standing next to the other guys. When he's posing alone, you might think he's too small, he's too flat, but no, I think that's because his head is really big, it's really massive. If you place your finger on his head, you're gonna see how big this guy is. Do it, do it now, and see how big he actually is. I know it sounds funny, but it's true, it's, it's literally true. Nick Walker, for example, has much, much smaller head, or, for example, Michal Krizio is a great example, when guys have small necks or small heads, and they have an illusion of being bigger when they are standing alone, but on stage, that doesn't really mean anything. So Hunter is gonna look amazing on that stage, and here's the thing, in his off-season, before his prep started, he was telling us what his goals are uh, in this year, and he said he wanted to bring his waist size down and improve his back and also work on conditioning, come in peeled, come in in much better shape because he was always heavily criticized for not being super conditioned. That would be the argument which people would say when they would say that he didn't deserve to be for, that he was supposed to be uh, below Nick Walker because Nick was in better condition. So he had to do that. Brandon Curry had an interesting theory. Uh, it was that Hunter is going to try to push for conditioning too much and that he's going to come too small, too flat. But I have to disagree with that because in this video right here, Hunter does look flat, but he looks very conditioned, very detailed, and I think it's just going to be about peaking, you know. If he carves up properly, if he fills out, he's going to look big and conditioned and with newly created improvements, I think the judges will award him for all that and I think he's going to stay in that top four where he was last year and he might even move up a spot or two who knows where do you guys have Hunter Labrada by the way he's 257 right now 257 close to 260 so that's a big bodybuilder you know and he's flat for sure so he's gonna yeah he's gonna dehydrate he's going to carb up so he's probably gonna stay around the same weight he's not gonna go lower than this so almost 260 that's a big big open bodybuilder now we have another guy, another physique update, and that is, as you can see, Nick Walker, who is 258, only one pound heavier than Hunter Labrada. So they are about the same weight. I think Nick is a little bit shorter, so that means he's a little bit bigger, but not too much. And you guys know that Nick is a mass monster. That is his strong point, muscle. He has a ton of it. And Hunter... Hunter is kind of known for his lines, right? He has small waist, he has beautiful shape, he has great strength.
structure, but as you can see, they're about similar weight. So if Hunter is just as big as Nick and he's as conditioned, which seems like it's going to be the case, but he is more aesthetic, what does that mean? Is he gonna place higher than him again? Well, I don't know about that. First of all, weight is not everything. It is about shape, it is about where you have the muscle, and Nick has added muscle. So once again, he's 258. Last year at the Mr. Olympia, he was 245, and I don't think he's gonna go lower than 258. So he gained about 13 pounds, which is a lot in a year that that's really a lot. And I would be surprised if we saw that from somebody like, I don't know, Big Ramy, Brandon Curry, William Bonek, Hadi Chopin, these older guys, but Nick is a youngster and he is a mutant, he's a freak, so it's kind of expected. He kind of thought that he gained more, he thought he gained like 15-20 pounds, but as you can see he went down to 258, so he lost a little bit more than he thought he would. Anyways, he looks great right now, and if we go back to what I said about conditioning, comparing his conditioning to Hunter's, I think Nick is more conditioned. Yeah, Hunter is gonna bring something we never saw Hunter, but Nick had better conditioning before than Hunter, and I think, I, I don't see Hunter having these kind of uh, dry glutes and hamstrings and lower back. And also, back development. Nick has better back than Hunter, much better. Yeah, Hunter improved it and he's conditioned, but he is not this, this developed in his lower lats in particular. And as you can see, Nick definitely improved his back. He, his conditioning is going to be great. He's going to be dry. I think a little bit more conditioned Hunter. And naturally, he has more separation in quads, in back, pretty much everywhere. So, in my opinion, even though it's probably going to be Hunter's best, I still think Nick is going to beat him. I can, I can see Nick being in top two. I'm gonna make a prediction video soon, maybe tomorrow. Almost all of the bodybuilders posted enough updates that we can actually kind of have, you know, an idea of who's gonna place where. And Nick, in my opinion, top two, top three. That's the way I see it right now. Here is another update that he posted. He says his this was his first check-in in person with his coach, Matt Jensen. And he says Matt liked him better in person. Again, he says he's 258, pretty flat and now they're gonna have more carbs so his peak week has begun he's gonna try to fill out now as you can see he does look a little bit flat but still he has a ton of muscle he definitely gained more muscle in the off season and right now he looks dry he looks shredded so once again i don't see this guy you know placing out of top three i know he has structural flaws but he knows how to hide them and he's really developed, he doesn't really lack anything, he's really big and really massive, he's going to be shredded, so I don't know how could I place him out of my top three, but only based on structure and shape, no, no, I think he has good enough structure to, you know, again, be in top three, whatever you guys think, you can tell me down below. Ever since Brandon Curry did that Fuad Abiyad podcast and said that Rafael Brandao is going to be in top 5 at the Mr. Olympia, there is a lot of talk about Rafael Brandao. Some people are actually thinking he might actually crack that top 5. A lot of people don't have him in their top 10s. Me personally, I don't know. I don't think I can see him in my top 10. Yes, he's very aesthetic. He has probably the prettiest shape out of all bodybuilders that are doing this year's Mr. Olympia. And in this story that he posted, he does look pretty big, you know, pretty full and round, especially in these legs that he showed us here. So his lateralis is looking ridiculous. I mean, look at how sweepy his legs are. And also, I think, I think it looks like he improved his adductors as well. So his legs are overall bigger thicker, denser, fuller, and his conditioning is uh, really coming along. Now, do I think he's going to be in the top 10 or top 5? I still don't think so. This is the most recent update that we got of Rafael Brandau. This was at 16 days out of Mr. Olympia, so 10 days ago. And as you can see, his chest is really big, really full and thick, but you know, that's about it. You can't, you can't compare him to guys like... I mean, if, you, if you're if you gonna say he's gonna be top 5, that means 
he's gonna have to beat a lot of big guys. Let's say he doesn't beat Big Ramy, Brandon Curry, Nick Walker, and uh, let's say William Bonek. Who is left? Uh, Harry Chupan, way bigger, much thicker than this guy. Hunter Labrada, same thing. Ian Valier, way bigger. Derek Lansford, Andrew Jack, all of these guys have a lot more muscle than Rafael. The only way that I could imagine him placing so high is if the judges really uh, didn't know what to do with his aesthetics and <laughs> kind of placed him there because he stands out uh, too much. And I don't know, maybe the judges like the aesthetics, maybe they're gonna go with that direction, I don't know, maybe something like that, but realistically, based on the way the judges are judging these shows, they have been so far, you know, Raphael, I don't think I can see him in my top, uh, in my top 5 or top 10, but does he look impressive? Hell yeah, he is one of my favorite bodybuilders as far as uh, the way he looks, the way I would like to look. But, you know, based on the judging criteria, I cannot see him in my top 10, let alone top 5. In my previous video, you heard me say that I'm pretty sure, I firmly believe that Chris Bumstead is going to defend his title this year. But that was before I saw this photo of Terence Ruffin. And now, I'm not even so sure. If Chris sleeps a little, if he's not perfectly picked, this guy might take him out. Because look at this. Look at how hard, how conditioned, how big, how round, how freaky he is in this photo. And here is the funny thing. Do you know what is Terence Ruffin's weakness? Well, let me tell you, it's definitely not his back or his backside. Glutes, hamstrings, back itself, rear delt, traps, whatever. He is not weak in that area for sure. And it's definitely not his chest, nor are his shoulders. It's not his waistline, it's not his wee taper, it's not his conditioning, it's definitely not his legs. It is, or at least it's supposed to be, his arms. His arms are supposed to be his weak body part. Do they look small and weak to you now? I would have to say absolutely not, not even a little bit. When I saw this photo I was like, wow, wow, this is, this is an amazing physique. Now as far as him beating Chris... That's not gonna happen unless Chris is off. If Chris is on, it still it still won't happen. I don't care how how impressive uh, Terence is looking. But if Chris sleeps a little, this is the guy that can take him out. It's just him, only him. I wasn't so sure about it. I thought maybe Ramon Dino is gonna surpass Terence Ruffin this year, or it might be Urs or somebody else. But you know, based on the way he looks right now, this is pretty ridiculous. This is pretty impressive. I think this guy is going to be either first or second, and that's it. Whatever you guys think, though, tell me down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best, and bye-bye.